Hey guys, welcome to Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds. I'm Ted, hanging out with... Dave. And uh, today we're going to do a uh, character build for a fortune teller. But before we jump into that, why don't you jump down to the description below, click the link for the newsletter, sign up, name, email, you know the deal. Uh, it's uh, the best way and only way to find out how to game with Nerdarchy and to get great, great gaming tips delivered right to your uh, email every day, or every week. Yes, every week. week. So uh, <laughs> they're like every they're like every week. Everyone's unsubscribing from the newsletter. I don't or every day. Everyone's unsubscribing from the newsletter. <laughs> I don't hear from you guys that much. Now once we try and keep it to once a week unless we have something special going on. When you first sign up, you get a couple emails right away, and you know there's free bonuses in with those emails. One of which is how to game with us. Another is the nerd nerdarchy uh, ringtone. If you would like that, um, so, but we try not to overwhelm you. On with the content. Fortune teller. We uh, uh, who we, asked for this one? This so, was Alexander Watt. That's what it was as a as a request. So, how do you make a fortune teller in in D and D? You had said it was uh was pretty easy. I think so. I think you go diviner, uh, wizard. Okay. You use arcane focus the orb every time you do Ooh, your divining stuff. Orb. Now, so here's the thing. Like, so how much fun do we have it? If we want to go like, you know, kind of like uh, gypsy style. Uh, fortune teller. I think we go human. Okay. With a charlatan background. Ooh, that's a that's a good one. You know, so you could actually, uh, so this character could actually mix in like real fortune telling and and divining with you know being a hoax as well. Right. Uh, so so I think that would be kind of fun. Um, but so a human, do we take the plus one to all stats, do, 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 or do we take a feat? We take the feat actor. Oh, we could take the feet actor. You know, I was even thinking about um, maybe doing, uh, do, you know, doing Magic Initiate for one of the other spellcasting classes in case they got uh, different divination spells mm -hmm. than the wizard. But actor would work well if we're going with, you know, this character is... Because really, the, um, like the, the whole point of the fortune teller, it's really about putting on a show. Like, that, that's what you want. So, I, I, uh, so maybe our diviner actually does the real magic, the divine information ab ab about their mark, and then like to spiel out the false fortune instead of actually using the magic <laughs> to actually try and look into the future. I think that'd be uh, you know really good. You'd want to make sure that you know you have the high intelligence and you have the higher charisma because you want you know the persuasion and deception skills to be pretty decent. Um, and it's just you know it, it's about presence. But, you know, I, although I don't think the actor is the way to go because actor is more like taking on the role, like where, where like, I think, like, the charlatan fortune teller already has, only does one role. That's true. So, like, I think it's a good, it's a good feat, but for this, I think you waste most of it. Okay. Uh, I mean, unless they're, like, they could, like, pull it out of their bag of tricks to do other things. You, you could also be like, okay, well, I'm using actor to then make a separate guys so that when you deceive somebody and you need to get out of dodge you just take on another persona to change your clothes and off you go yeah why well, what why well, i agree with that but i feel like a lot of the actor benefits mechanically mm -hmm. are really are to like mimic other people okay specifically so actor is definitely a strong possibility but yeah you know, i'm trying to think if anything else uh you know works as well Again, we said you could do a magic initiate to, to dip into a little bit more uh, magic. You know, I always love getting more cantrips as well as more um, um, another spell is always good. R ritual cast, uh, Tensor's Floating Discs of the Orb Hunters. Oh, you could absolutely do that. But you're, as a wizard, you get ritual yeah. casters. Yeah. So you, yes. So that's, that's not a big deal there. Right. Um, I'm trying to think of any other feats would really... Really stick out. Observant? Mm. I think Observant's actually better. Okay. Because I feel like that's a big part of what... Uh, You'd be able to notice more things about... About the person without even using any magic. Like, you know, you're going to... You basically, that, that that bump to investigate is huge. Right. And and that's pretty... You know, and perception. So, you know, like, as soon as they come in, you're, like, sizing them up, figuring out, oh, you know, they're single, they're married. Right. You know, whatever you're totally doing, like the Sherlock Holmes thing, and uh, you know, and that's a big part of with a story. With the, um, I think observing uh, is is a super powered feat, in my opinion. It is, 
It is. And then, you know, also, you're getting the plus one to uh, to a mental stat. Right. So, you know, that that means we can take our 15 to a 16. Right. And what does that mean? We still have two plus ones to play with. Mm-hmm. So we can make our 13 or 14. Yeah. And we're still going to end up, we're going to get stuck with one odd no matter right. what. So where do you dump? Where do you? Uh, uh, this character is probably going to uh, dump either strength or dex. Okay. Or I mean, or con. Any of the physicals. This character can. We dump con. We make it an old person. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so so our 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 our, our um, fortune Strat- teller is so going to be an old person. So you've got a uh, eight con, ten ten dex or twelve dex. Uh. 12 decks. 12 decks, 10 strength, and then just super super load your, your, mentals. your mentals. Yeah, you need the high charisma, you know, because you want people to like you, trust you. So you put the 16 in charisma, and the... Oh, yeah, you could definitely get a 16 charisma, 16 intelligence. Because you can, can you put the two plus ones in the same... No, but uh, I believe the observant can go to any of the mentals. Okay, I might be wrong. Like uh, I don't have the PHB in front of me. Uh, it, you know, if not, one's going to be a fifteen and one's going to be a sixteen. Okay, uh, but you can. Well, no, you would just switch them. Like you just put the fourteen in intelligence, mm-hmm. take your plus one from being human, ah, okay. and your plus one from observant, make it a sixteen. Right. The fifteen becomes a sixteen. Uh, you have a fourteen wisdom, and then you know, then we dump we dump all the. Uh, we basically all the low stats will then go into physicals. We're going to do something we pretty much never do and dump con, and make our our Raceland type wizard. <laughs> but let's face it, this character's getting attacked. That's gone. Things have gone way horribly <laughs> wrong. If he can't talk himself or magic so, himself out of it, human observant, uh, charlatan. charlatan, diviner wizard. Yes. And that yeah, that is how I would do uh, uh, peer into the orb yeah. as opposed to the crystal ball. <laughs> and we're going with like we're going with this as an older cat, an, an older older woman or older man right. as as our fortune teller, you know, unless you wanted to do the young, sexy, uh, uh, gypsy <laughs> fortune teller, it, you know, then you might dump you know strength instead of uh, con. con. Right, is is the way I would go with that. So, what do you guys think? Do you do you like it? Would you play it at your table? Uh, let us know in the comments below while you're at it. Like, share, even subscribe. You can patronize us in a good way over on Patreon. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.